Hi everyone, Kyle here from Bostic Family Light Show. In today's video, we're gonna redo our arches. Last year we used one inch PEX tubing to make our arches. This year we are going to remake them using two inch HDPE. It's a little bit thicker tubing and it should diffuse the light a little bit better. So I'm gonna walk you through how we set up the strips from the beginning, cut the pipe, and put the whole thing together. Here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is take the LED strip out. We are using WS2812B IP65 rated strip. This one is 5 volts and has 300 LEDs per strip. We're going to cut this strip in half so we will have 150 LEDs in each arch. So go ahead and you can take it off the spool and then align both of the ends so you can get to the center. Once you know where the center point is, you can flip the strip over and lightly score the bottom of it to remove the adhesive backing. Once the adhesive backing is removed, you can see where the manufacturer joined these two connections and it's multiple strips that are soldered together at the factory. So you can remove the silicone on top, heat up that solder joint, and you can pull the strips apart and you don't need to cut them. So right here is that little joint I was telling you about. You can see that they're just kind of two tabs there. And then you want to just gently heat up the strip. You want to be careful not to overheat it. So you can use something like a solder sucker to remove any excess solder as you start to heat it up. Once you get enough of the solder removed, you can add the solder and iron across the different contacts apply just a little bit of pressure and you should be able to pull the LED strip apart. Once you have the two equal lengths, you want to go ahead and add a little bit more solder to the pads that will allow the wire you need to connect to it to adhere to it and give you a good connection again. Go ahead and make sure that the wire you're adding to it has already been tinned. And then from there, you can go ahead and start to heat up the wire and then that contact point on the strip. And then you'll be able to make that connection. Next up, you want to make sure that you give it enough time to cool, but I want to add a power injection connector here as well. So make sure that that has enough time to cool, and then you can tin the power injection connector. And then once you do that, you'll heat up the wire for the power injection. Once that is nice and hot, then you can add it to the strip. You want to make sure that you heat that up as opposed to heating up the strip to melt the solder. That way you won't overheat the strip itself and damage it. Once you have done that, you can also take a multimeter just to do a continuity check and make sure that there is no continuity between power and ground, or power and data, or data and ground. I've ran into an issue where a few of the other strips had continuity between them, and it was actually like that from the manufacturer, so I had to replace the entire strip. But you want to make sure that your solder connection doesn't cause any type of short. Once you've verified that, then you can go ahead and start to weatherproof that connection you just made. The way I do this is I usually add hot glue and then I will add clear sil or I'm sorry, clear heat shrink over top of that. 
I've tried multiple different methods in the past, silicone, liquid electrical tape, and a host of other tips and tricks, and none of those seem to hold up as well as hot glue with clear heat shrink. So make sure that you add the hot glue on both sides. Make sure it is fully encased in hot glue. That will give it a airtight weatherproof connection. And then from there, you can slide down the heat shrink. And then when you heat up the heat shrink to melt, it will melt the glue inside and it will bond to the strip and to the heat shrink and make sure that when it cools, you have no air, no moisture, anything like that, that will be able to get in and corrode the actual strip. As it's cooling, you can push down on the clear heat shrink to make sure that you get all the air pockets and bubbles out and make sure that it has a good seal. And then we can go ahead and we can add the Ray Wu connector, or whatever connector you're using. Um, in this case, I added a Ray Wu connector and I just used normal heat shrink with the marine adhesive inside it for my connections, but you could also use solder sleeves. I left the wire exposed here. That way it gives it a little bit more flexibility. I'm adding the LED to this plastic diffuser. What this will do is basically allow the LED to sit up a little bit higher off of the bottom of the HDPE and it will help reduce or eliminate the black shadow you get by having the LED strip laid directly on the bottom of the pipe. So next up, I need to cut the HDPE to size so it will fit where we want the arch to be. So let's go ahead and we'll jump into that. So now that we have the pipe all cut, we have the arch basically just sitting on top of our rebar caps. And we basically just got the rebar caps and created a little notch for the wire. After you have them spaced out correctly, you can take the pipe off and you can start to slide the LED strip in. Because we use that plastic diffuser, it will give it a little bit of rigidity and make sure that the LED strip doesn't twist or bend around inside the pipe. And that'll help give us a more uniform color as well. So once you have this strip all the way through the pipe, you can slide it back onto the rebar caps or whatever base you're gonna use. We ended up putting a two inch clamp around the HDPE pipe and then we use some L brackets that are mounted to that wood frame that'll allow us to secure the HDPE pipe to that wood base and it will prevent the HDPE from swaying or leaning too far one direction or the other and help just give it a little bit more rigidity. So all we have left now is to wait for it to get a little darker so we can turn it on and test it out. So we have the arches out in test mode right now. They look great. The two inch over the one inch definitely diffuses the light better like we thought. So super happy with how these turned out. If you guys have any thoughts or questions, feel free to leave a comment or send us a message. We're gonna be doing a 4th of July show. So we're gonna have some videos coming out for that soon. So make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe button to make sure you get the notification. We'll see you next time.